Hey, what is going on everyone? My name is Mikey and today in, or in this video really, we'll be talking about how you can use Notion for Active Recall. Now we'll be starting on talking about what is Active Recall and the research behind it and how it's the number one study strategy that basically helps everyone do well in school. It definitely helped me do really well in school, especially when I transitioned from highlighting and rereading to using Active Recall in first year of university. It literally took my grades exponentially higher. And then we'll be talking about what is Notion and then we'll be talking about how you can use Notion for Active Recall and how you could either make it really complex or it can be really simple and it doesn't take a lot of time. This will definitely help you do much better in school in my opinion if your grades aren't high right now or if your grades are already high and you want to figure out other ways to study then yeah this video would be definitely beneficial for you. I have made previous videos on Notion and how to use them, take them from being a beginner to being an advanced user so definitely check those out. I'll link them above right here but other than that let's get started with this video. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is what is Active Recall. Now Active Recall, the whole idea of it is how you can essentially take information from your memory and recall it. So it's actively recalling the memory you have. Like when someone asks you a question, what's your name? And you remember, okay, my name is Michael. That way you'll never forget your name because you have so much practice of having to actively recall that memory. But when someone asks you, for example, what are all the digits in pi? 3.1415 and then you don't remember after that, or at least personally, I don't remember after that because I don't always recall that information actively so it doesn't stay fresh in my head. That's the whole idea of active recall where you try to learn something and rather than you know telling yourself, oh, I learned it or oh, I understood it, you ask questions that help retrieve that information from your memory. There was actually research done on figuring out what is the best study strategy if you don't believe me that active recall is the best. It was actually done in Washington University. They basically asked students what was their number one study strategy and what they found is only 1.1% of students labeled active recall or practice recall as their number one study strategy which is very surprising to say the least. They found that 54.8% used rereading and 1.6% of students used highlighting. Now the second most used study strategy is practice problems followed by rewriting notes. We know from the literature rewriting notes and rereading is not useful. Practice problems definitely very very useful but practice recall comes first because active recall actually is the umbrella term and under it comes practice problems, flashcards and everything really under it. We're going to be using Notion to kind of help your study strategy and make it easier for you to use active recall. So you guys definitely know what Notion is if you're watching this video, but if you don't know what Notion is, Notion is a system that combines Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, maybe even Notability for note taking, a calendar view. It combines everything into one area so you can have a very organized and good structure for your school, professional, academic life, and really the list goes on. Now Notion is a free software I'll show you guys right now, and everything I will be talking about in this video is free, you don't need to pay for anything. All you have to do is have Notion installed and maybe have a PowerPoint slide from your classes handy so you could figure out exactly how everything is going to work. Now we're going to be talking about why is Notion perfect for active recall. So in a previous video I talked about how you can make a weekly schedule. Assuming you already have a weekly schedule set in place it may look like this. We're going to create a page from that weekly schedule and we're going to use it for the example of this video. Now the way that I like to use active recall in Notion is using toggle lists. Now easily I could do you know, a front slash and then I scroll down, I try to find toggle lists and I have toggle list right here. Or what I could do is a greater than sign and I press space and I have my toggle list. This is actually where we're going to be practicing active recall. Now this says physics lecture, I'll make it bio lecture just because the example I have today is actually biology. We'll make this biology as well. Now we're going to actually be talking about active recall and how you can incorporate it. So I have an example of a slide deck that I had for a advanced cellular biology course and I'm going to show you how I go about taking and making this into, you know, active recall, especially on Notion. One way of doing it could be what is alternative, alternative splicing. And then writing down, you know, alternative splicing is this and that and that and that. But that takes me a lot of time. And to be honest, like, I don't have time to write down all this again. So what I like to do is very simple, actually. Command shift four for a screenshot. Screenshot this page. Take the screenshot. Put it in Notion. And now I know what is alternative splicing. And I know that I have the PowerPoint under it. Now when I go and review my notes, maybe I'll have, you know, plenty of toggle lists over here. Like what is alternative splicing? Maybe I'll have the process control. We'll do another one. What is the process control of trans splicing? And then, like I said, command shift four, we copy this slide and then we copy it in here. And then I'm going to close this off. 
So really all I have to do is just come up with the question and I don't have to add any form information because you already have that slide deck. You already have the information. And again, that's all I literally have to do. Just come up with the question. But I don't like to stop there because I'll come up with the question. I'll look at it and be like, oh, maybe I got it. Maybe I didn't. But how do I know which ones I'm good at and which ones I'm not really good at? What I like to do is actually highlight these toggle lists based on how well I'm doing on them. And there's three different colors that I use. One is green, meaning, you know, I know this, it's in the bag, like I haven't memorized. Another one is yellow. So like, you know, sometimes I know it, but I, and maybe I don't understand it fully. And for the sake of this video, uh, let's do another one. What is the, there you go. And then I will also screenshot this page so that I could keep it in my toggle list. And we will label this, we will highlight it actually red. So now I have my bio lecture and I have my answers or like the, the way that I actually labeled them. And I know alternative splicing, I'm doing really good in it. Yellow, I'm like, eh, kind of good, not very good. Red is like, I'm getting so many things wrong. So now when I come to study it again, maybe in a week or in a couple days, I can come back, oh, you know, alternative splicing was very good. So let's start with the bad ones. I like to do the bad ones first. What I also like to do is kind of organize these into three different sections. So we're gonna take the trend splicing one. We're gonna make a new divider. Then I'm going to take the red one and make another section. So now I have three different areas. I have my green ones, my yellows and my reds. And I can even come and I could, I could title them. We're going to label it good. Now two hashtags, give me the header number two. You could also access header number two by going like this, heading number two. And we'll do, eh, like they're all right. Eh. And for the last header, maybe I want to do a trash emoji. And we'll put it as trash. That way I know, you know, I'm good at this. I'm great at it. Eh. And these are the ones that I'm trash at. That way when I come to study again, okay, I have alternative splicing. Did I get it right? I got it right. And then based on whether I got it right or wrong, I can move it to different sections. You know, if I'm doing good or if I did worse than it, if I did better in this one. And then all I have to do is just change the color and we'll make it green. And we'll make this one yellow. I also don't have to put colors here. I, you know, I could, I, I guess I could put it here. Maybe this might be easier and this might, might, might be what you prefer. And then I could remove it from these guys. That way, if I ever move it around, I don't have to change the color. Again, you could play with it however you like. I'm just going to change the colors like this. Maybe it'll be more organized for you guys. Color, default, uh, color. We'll do red. Good. And we'll do green. Good uh, trash. Okay, now the final thing we'll be talking about in this video really is let's say you made these toggle lists and you also want to, you know, put them on Anki or you like to use an Anki like me. Now, personally, I love using Anki. So I actually found a website called 2Anki.net. You could actually convert your toggle list to Anki flashcards and it's actually fairly simple. All you have to do is go to the top right of your Notion page, click on the, the three dots. Then we're going to do export. You want to make sure it's HTML, include content, everything, include sub pages export it i'll put it in my downloads folder then on 2onki.net we're going to select it import upload converting converting download then i'm going to click bio lecture then we have the three files that i just talked about they just uploaded study now what is the process process control of trans splicing here's the picture that i added next card picture next card image and picture as well and that is essentially how to, you know, use Notion for toggle list, but also not only that, but convert them and use them on Anki. Now, I really hope this video was beneficial. This is actually how I basically studied in my whole undergraduate career when it came to memorizing things for courses that required a rote memorization. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care and take it easy.